Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, there seems to be no escaping the news about the cost of living crisis. Not only are we living it every day, but there seems to be reports all the time about how tough keeping on top of our bills will now be that we're in winter. It's getting colder, the heating's going on, and we all know it's going to be a tough winter ahead. Here on Real, Real Health, we're all about giving you simple tips to help with health and wellness. So this week, we thought we'd bring you some advice on how you can try and keep costs low over the coming months. I'm delighted to be joined by Agnes Boucher-Hayes, Home Economist and Lecturer at the Technical University of the Shannon, to chat to us about the top tips on how we can stay on top of our energy usage and hopefully keep our bills down as much as possible. Agnes, a very big welcome back to the show. How's it going? Very well, thanks. Lovely to be back, Carl. Thank you. Agnes, it is really important to say these tips won't solve the cost of living crisis, but they will make it a little bit easier and hopefully save you some money over the course of the next few months. Yeah, we're all facing, uh, there, there, as you say, there is absolutely no getting away from the cost of living and the cost of energy in particular. And we rely heavily on whether it's um, solid fuel, electricity, wherever we get our electricity from, or if we use solid fuels with that oils, gas, you know, whatever, there's no getting away from it at the minute. So it's quite present and prevalent, but there are simple things, some simple things that we can do. Some of them might come across as a little bit old school, but you know, sometimes the old, you know, people kept out cold during the winter a long time ago as well. So, you know, there are, and people have different types of houses now as well, Carl, you know, there's the older house, the modern, more modern houses. So, you know, people have different requirements. So this may not apply to everybody. It might apply to some, but there's no harm being aware of it anyway. That might help some little bit. We're not going to solve it, as you say, but we might try and relieve some little bit of the pressures. Or we and it's also, smart. yeah, it's also important to say that, you know, it's, you know, it's never too late to, to make simple changes that, yeah. you know, some people have written off the winter already and think, oh, it's too late to do whatever. It's never too late. Every simple change is going to make a difference. They're very simple, very, there are some really practical things, you know, I suppose my, my hope would be to give people practical tools that they can use, that they can implement immediately. And all of these things that we're talking about are going to be things that can be done more or less within a short period of time. So yeah, you know, coming up to Christmas, after Christmas in the spring, sometimes it can be just as cold in the spring as it is in the winter. So, you know, there is a long, we, we keep the heating on for a good while in Ireland. So, you know, no point letting it literally go out the window. There's no point throwing the money out the window <laughs> or up the chimney, you know? So, you know, we, we, maybe some of these things might be of a little help to some people, yeah. Okay, so let's get cracking. So the first one is about prepping your home for winter and getting it ready for winter. Uh, yeah. And that is important. It's like anything. It's like prepping for a marathon. It's like prepping for, you know, to lose weight. If you want to lose weight, you prep and you plan. And to get winter ready with your home, it's no different. It's prepping, it's planning, it's reviewing and assessing where your home is at, what simple things you may need to do in terms of servicing, presumably, and stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose, well, first of all, the boiler should be serviced on an annual basis. That's one of and that's a that's a cost you should build into your housekeeping um because if your boiler or when your boiler is running efficiently and when it's running smoothly it actually is making sure that you're not losing money because it is working efficiently whereas if you let it uh, if, if it's not running efficiently and if your radiators aren't running efficiently then you're not getting anywhere. So the boiler is tipping away, but the radiators aren't doing what they should be doing because there could be an air lock. But there's some even simpler, so that's a cost that should be built into your household budget. Um, but some simple things you can do, Carl, a letterbox in a door. There, you know, anywhere there is a draft, what you can try and do is seal that. So around doors, around windows, you can buy draft excluders, four doors and four windows. I suppose I'm speaking particularly to people that might have an older house or houses that aren't as well insulated. Um, so you can put, you know, other, you know, if, if you have a room that you don't use and there is a fireplace in it, you can put something up the chimney. Uh, you can, like, they used to stuff them a lot of the time, olden days, olden days, like in the 60s, 70s, 50s, whenever, with newspapers. But just remember to take the newspaper down before you light the fire, or that involves a whole different problem set. That of could problems. be a slightly different issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can also you can you can get um there are balloons that you can get to put up your chimney to stop the draft coming down so it's the, literally the, the the hot air isn't going out the chimney um some of the other things you can do as well is look at your temperature controls the controls that you have and what temperature you have your heaters and your radiators running at so there's 
different things that you can get quite technical. If you've got a newer house, you probably have, it's probably a smart house and you can everything from, as long as your phone is working, you can work everything, but not everybody has that ability. So just having gauges on radiators, they usually go from zero to five. So making sure that the temperature in the house is correct. So, and presumably, what, which is the lower or the higher? I always wonder that. Is presumably one is the lowest and five is the highest on a rad? Yeah, zero, they usually go from zero to five and zero is the lowest for it. If it goes below zero degrees within the house, the temperature will click in as well, you know, to make sure that so that will prevent the house from becoming, from freezing pipes and things like that. Usually you tend to run them around two to three. So your sitting room will be generally around 20 degrees. So you'd adjust the radiator to about three or four, depending. Uh, Four is usually about 22 degrees, um, but when we lower the temperature by one degree in on on on, on you know, when we lower it, we actually lower the bill as well. So we can lower it nearly by 10 percent. So that's so rather than running your 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 thermostat at 22, run it at 20. There's a little saving being made there. In bedrooms and in halls and corridors, you usually run them between 16 to 18 degrees, 15, 16 to 18 degrees. Those areas are usually cooler um, because you don't want a really hot room to go to sleep in. You need air to circulate during the night while you're while you're sleeping. It can help just get and feeling refreshed. If you've ever, you know, we've all done this. We've all been in hotel rooms where the you can't open a window and it's quite hot. You don't have a refreshing night's sleep. So a cooler temperature can make can help you feel a little bit more refreshed in the morning. Um, so that would be another thing. Um, so also the, what we would run our, um, the washing machine, like if we had the washing machine running, temp, clothes can take say 40 degrees. So your label on your clothes can say 60, 40. That's the top temperature it can take. You can also go lower. So 30 degrees is usually where you try to run a washing machine and a dishwasher, you know, your dishwashers as well. Reduce the temperature down, reduce the time down. It'll probably, it'll do the same job. And will you get um, the clothes as clean on a colder wash? Yeah, yeah you oh, can, yeah. yeah. Because the detergents have cut up. So the detergent that you use, they're all designed now, a lot of the detergents, just check though, whichever one you buy, they're actually designed to work at a lower temperature so that you can actually reduce. And it's not just about money, so that's also about CO2 emissions. So um, running um, between nine and, uh, nine and 11 and five and seven, there are high pressure times on the grid. Um, so I heard a radio ad the other day telling me this. It was, uh, it was, it was, it's from the government basically saying, yeah. you know, between five and seven, don't use your stuff, use them any other time. Yeah, well, there's two things, there's two factors here to consider. Depending on what bill, billing system you're on, you may actually have, um, you may get a lower rate for, uh, for, for using it at more unsociable hours. Um, but when, but when you use them at these hours, the peak hours, it's not just the price that goes up, it's also the emissions of CO2 because the whole grid has to work harder to, to keep all of the all of the supplies going. Um, one of the, I'm going to just couch this slightly though, I did hear uh, an electrician on the radio saying, particularly it was a West Cork electrician on the radio saying, make sure you're in the house when- I heard when him, I, have, I, I, I was listening on that, I, I know exactly who that was, uh, <laughs> saying that, because that, that, that was around the, the pre-programming of, of the times yeah. and stuff was, and if you weren't in the house, don't leave them on. Yeah. And at night, don't go to bed with them on. And I have to say, I do use my, my I use my, my, my my own machines i would put them on at night when i'm when i'm in the house because it's the lower rate uh, but then of course he put a note of caution so you have to wait up for yourself but as he said i would make sure my filters are clean that uh, on my dishwasher on my i would maintain the tumble dryer as well making sure the filters and the dust gatherers you know the little bit of uh, lint that can be caught there are some of the problems that would happen and again i suppose just checking and making sure that my equipment is running efficiently you know in so much as i can you know making sure that i'm not smelling burning um <laughs> <Not good. laughs> I, I think it was the same show when that when that when that chap was on the electrician it was another chap on who had a smart meter and whatever deal or package he got he got one day a week free that's right yeah. Uh, and the the per he was on the it was Joe Duffy or somebody and he was saying that basically he does You're everything right. on he does everything on a Saturday. Yeah, uh, yeah. Saturdays is free right. day, so he does all of his washing and mm -hmm. all of his laundry and all of his drying on a Saturday. And that's one of the things as well when we're talking about you know being clever about what you're doing or working smarter is checking out who your supplier is, what deal you have 
when you can use um, your, your equipment and things more efficiently. I have a friend whose husband um, works late at night. So when he comes in, his job is to put on the machines because that's the time when the, the, the electricity, she's gone to bed, but he's putting on the machines. You know, so we've got to adjust our thinking a little bit around that as well. Um, and one of the other things that can be a great help as well is the timers and controls. So you can get hive monitors, but if you happen to be, you know, you can get hives and there's government supports for that from uh, and any, anybody who will be installing them, like, you know, the, your energy supplier or if you're getting a new boiler or whatever, they will actually install them for you. And they're quite handy. But when you're using your um, heating, he, turn the heating on 30 minutes before you actually need it and then turn it off 30 minutes before you don't need it. So because the room, it'll take a little while to heat up. You want it at optimum heat and you want it at a nice temperature, but also just like when you're cooking, there is residual heat within the system uh, where after it's turned off. So you don't need to keep it turned on the entire time. Um, but also, if you, as I said, keep the, the sitting rooms around the 20, the, the, the bedrooms between the 16 to 18 degrees. And when you're looking at heating your water, they're different, you know, the temperature there, you, you know, is optimum for efficiency when it comes to money and use of energy is about 60 to 65 degrees. So if you were setting your thermostat on your boiler, just set it to 60 to 65 degrees. And depending on which system you have, whether it's a combi system or whether you, which doesn't actually um, have a tank any longer, they're quite efficient. But if you do happen to have a tank, make sure you have a lagging jacket. Now they're not terribly expensive. You, there is a small outlay of cash, but for the gains that you will make, you know, it's important. And make sure it's about 75 millimeters thick. That's the minimum industry standard. And one of the other things that somebody can do is lag pipes. Now, lagging pipes sounds very technical. You can buy lagging for them, but also you can just get newspaper and you can you can wrap them in, in the new. Very old school, very old fashioned, but still it, there is merit in it, you know. So they're just, there's some of the things that you could do. Um, and you can have, you can switch off uh, different equipment that would actually, if you have something on standby, that will always be taking energy. Um, uh, phone chargers. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we got recently uh, were smart plugs, and like they're up, they're really, really, really hard for that reason in terms of switching mm -hmm. stuff off. So we have yeah. them all, everything on a timer. So the TV it switches off fully, yeah. the lamps switch off full, everything on the timer thing just switches it all off, and it's and it's and it's it's weirdly satisfying because you know that you're not spending money while you're sleeping, which, okay. is, which is great. It's I have simple. I I'm going to have to invest in those because I have spent. I don't know how I, I'm, I'm really conscientious now about turning things off. And the more I try to turn things off, the disappointment that I find when I walk in and I find that I've left something on, you know, it's just not worth it. But no, televisions, in all seriousness, televisions, having efficient, energy efficient light bulbs, um, having things on banks, like you've got smart switches, but if you don't want to start, you know, if you're from scratch, you can get um, energy banks where you plug everything in and it's one switch turned off. Oh yeah, the big, the, the tower thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The tower yeah. Thing. And they're quite helpful as well because you can have everything together. But once you turn it off, it's all gone. And you stick it on. Yeah. So again, we would have that for a TV or Skybox. It's on one yeah. smart plug and it just knocks it all off, which is great. Yeah. Folks, you're listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. We're giving you lots and lots of tips. There will be people going home tonight, Agnes saying, well, I heard that, you know, the bedroom should be whatever degree. I'm, it's great. It's yeah. great, which is really, really good. And then they'll go past my house, Carl, and there'll be a light on somewhere. <laughs> no car they'll, be, they'll be checking. Uh, I, you know, we've covered lots of ground so far. So I think it is important to recap. Cap. So winterproofing your home is important. Those draft excluders, the letterbox. We had we our last yeah. house was an A-rated house and had the insulated letterbox. And it was unbelievable. Yeah. Like no draft would come, no matter what the wind was, no draft yeah. would come anywhere. Drop down the temperature, especially in the bedrooms and the hallways, kind of 16 to 18 degrees. The rad, mm -hmm. I always wonder what the rad numbers meant. So at least now I know yeah. kind of three to four in the living areas and kind of one to two. Two to three. It, so, yeah. two to three. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um uh, the washing machine and the heating systems. The washing machine is a really interesting one, 30 degrees or so, and that'll absolutely work at that point. And then getting the boiler service is crucial and then switching off. So folks, you've loads already and we're only halfway through the, we're only halfway through the episode, which is brilliant. Um, how you cook is important too, isn't it? I know we we're chatting before the show about agas and whatever, but changing how you cook, that's important in terms of energy usage. I think, I think changing how you cook can be one aspect, but also using your equipment efficiently. 
is important. So using it as it was intended to be used. Um, one of the things, one of the biggest uses of energy is the oven in your home, because, you know, if you're cooking in the oven, it, you have a large space to fill and a large space to heat and maintain a temperature on. So while that's good, why not use the whole oven? So use the middle, top and bottom of the oven when you're when you're cooking. So um, if you're if you're going to use the oven, make sure like can you cook a bread? You know, if you had a simple bread recipe as well as you uh, as the chicken nuggets or the goujons or whatever else you're happening to be cooking in the oven, use the oven efficiently. But equally, Carl, sometimes in ovens, people can use them. They can put um, roasting tins and trays in. Take those out before you start cooking, because what you want to do is you want the circulation of the air to, to move quickly and for the whole oven to heat up. Whereas when you have different um, like empty trays and things like that, that can prevent the circulation of air. But what we'd want to do is make sure that we put as much as we can into the oven. So if you're doing a roast on a Sunday, put everything into the oven, roast the vegetables, roast the potatoes, roast everything put everything in and maybe you know have a dessert as well. So you're not even using the hob to a degree. Um, so you, that would be one thing, that would be the efficient use of your equipment. Also then pressure cookers, slow cookers, um, air fryers. Um, air fryers are just getting so much good press at the minute because it's a much smaller space that you have to heat up for a shorter period of time to cook the food. So we have one of them and it's really, like it's really yeah. handy. It's really handy. Um, the oven thing, I, I'm absolutely guilty of that too. I might put a small little thing in to cook yeah. and like the yeah. whole big oven, the small little thing in the center of it. But yeah, guilty as charged. So, you know, maybe um, if you're not in the habit of reheating in the microwave, microwaves are much more energy efficient if you're reheating something or cooking something like potatoes, like a jacket potato, rather than just putting the potato into the oven, maybe use the, you could use the air fryer, but a more efficient again would be the microwave to bake potato in, in, in the microwave. They're far more efficient. So just diversifying um, what you use. I love pressure cookers for stews and things like that, for particularly for a chicken casserole. I just think they're, to me, they're just- Oh yeah, so they're the slow, they're the slow cookers. No, no, the pressure oh, cooker no. is a very simple, it's like a pot that you put on top of the, the, the on the hob and you would it's it's the pressure that's built up in so you build up pressure in it so it cooks really really quickly so if you have gas for example that you're aware you know you don't want to like over a long period of time two hours to cook something on a gas cooker you can put it into the pressure cooker and it cooks at you know 15 20 minutes 30 minutes tops you'd have your whole meal coming out of the pressure cooker and you also get to hold all the nutrients in it because you only really you know it's all totally confined in the pot because it's a terribly tight fitting lid but equally if you're just cooking in general um make sure that the lid is appropriate for the size of the pot and also yeah, the size of the pot for the ring of what you're cooking yeah. on is important too so yeah. don't put the small pot on the big ring and that's why if you're when you're looking at the minute like somebody like yourself looking at you has induction hubs are amazing because they only heat exactly where the pot is. So there's no loss of energy. So just if somebody, if you were in a position to do that, but just make sure you're using the right ring, the correct equipment, again, using your equipment efficiently. Um, that would be so quite important. One of the key things I suppose generally is about being informed, isn't it? You know, if, if we looked at what we chatted through so far, it's about being informed of how, you know, the, the right temperature for your washing machine, for cleaning out the things in the dryer, for the cooker and cooking the right way you know using monitors if you have them available and what and knowing what appliances use the most energy so being informed is important to keep your bill down yeah i think it's exactly what you were saying isn't it it's like the health check for the home and knowing the different parts that you know where you can lose money and then trying to you know stop the the, the stop the flow of money out the door in in a silly you know in a way that isn't necessary you know so yeah just and knowing how your heating system works knowing making sure that you have the radiators bled so that the, the water is running through your heating system efficiently you know simple things can actually make big differences and impact greatly you know on 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 the bills you know um also just making sure that you don't open the door of the oven remember it's just like the fridge when we talked about the fridge car if you keep opening you're changing the temperature so first of all, nothing cooks when a door is open. Uh, equally, nothing cools when a door is open. So make sure you keep the oven door shut and that you know you're you're not checking the whole time. Allow the, the oven to do what the oh, oven yeah, does. Oh yeah, I do that to get guilty as charged for on that on that one as well. I open the door every couple uh, just to make sure it's cooking. Of course, there's a glass thing in front of it that I could happily look through, but I just don't for some and reason. Then, but I, I remember working with the chef and just like you know, all you hear is 
nothing cooks in a door that's in a co- in an oven that doesn't have a closed door like because you can just see the you know all of the, the the heat coming out literally and again that's the same with the fridge you know making sure that you don't leave the door of the fridge open for long periods of time because for every 10 to 20 seconds that you have the door open it takes about 45 minutes for it to come back up to you know come come for the temperature to cool down again, to take the hot air out, the exact opposite of the oven. But when you're looking at equipment as well in your kitchen, making sure the coils on the back of your fridge are clean to allow for the the ease of transfer of heat so that the cooling equipment and the heat heat can can be dispersed. Now, if you've got a built-in... So basically take all your appliances out and give them a good hoover or a good a good wipe mm-hmm. in terms of the you know the 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 dryer take out the thing with the dust in it the fridge yeah. take it out give it give it a good wipe of hoover so there you know I suppose that to summarize what we've chatted about so far there's a lot of content there's tons of it a lot of it's really really simple and that's really important because that's what we do in all aspects of health and this this is no different it's those simple things so you know check your appliances clean your appliances get to know your appliances get the house mm-hmm. kind of winter checked and winter ready get the boiler service if you don't understand how stuff works, get someone out to show you how all the stuff works and all the dials work. We, again, our last house, we hadn't a clue. We got somebody out and he showed us everything and it was great. So it's those simple tips that make a really, really big difference. As ever, if people want to contact you or get in touch with you, Agnes, where, where, how can they find you? And- uh, they can find me at the Technical University of the Shannon. So agnes.boucher hyphen hayes at tus.ie or a, a, my Instagram is a at a underscore boucher. So that's my Instagram handle. Agnes, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great to catch up and really simple tips for all our listeners. Folks, that's all we have time for. Another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. You know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Instagram and Health and independent.ie. Go check all your appliances, go clean them and let's save some energy between this week and next week. We'll see you soon. It's long a Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.